Hello everyone, it's Lennon and welcome back to Art and Archetypes. Now, because this is a series, this Art and Archetypes, it's it, it has been an every month thing, but as we as we are closing out the series, as it is December 2021, I want to let everyone know that you don't have to watch these archetype videos in any kind of order. If you want to go back and just kind of, you know, go through the playlist, because I do have this in its own playlist, you can like move around and watch which ones you feel the most drawn to and things like that. But because this is technically the last one we have done, I did want to mention for the ones that have been keeping up with it in real time that I'm so glad we've gotten to the end. I'm uh, kind of sad to see it go, to be honest. Um, there's been something very cathartic about doing these exercises with the archetypes and I don't necessarily think it has anything to do with the archetypes it's more so the art journaling I guess aspect of it to me <laughs> that maybe that's I need more of that in my life so I'm so happy to be here at uh, filming the last archetype in this series but if you come about and you haven't been keeping up or it's been like you know later 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 that I've posted these videos feel free to jump around and do whichever archetype you want at any given time. So let's jump right in. The last one that we are doing is the ruler. Now the ruler is to me is like the other, the flip side of the hero. It's almost like the very first, I believe that the hero was the very first archetype that we did. Actually, no, it was the innocent, but here's the hero. I think that in terms of archetypes, the ruler comes out in most lists last because it's probably the most dangerous because a lot of people in the modern world don't have rulerships anymore over a certain, like over peoples or what have you. I mean, there's like presidents and, and you know, queens and things, but it's not really it's not as heavy, as heavy as a thing as it was back in the day. Okay. Back in Young's time, I guess you could say. And I want to pay homage to that, but I also want to say that the ruler has modern qualities. We just had, I had to kind of dig a little. And as always, a lot of the, the websites that I use for this research will be in the resource section of this video. So don't forget to check all that out, all that loveliness. But I, I do, nodding back to the hero, I think that it, they're almost like, because every archetype has a shadow, but then when we look at the archetypes as a whole, all 12 of them, I, th I feel like the ruler is the shadow of the hero. Where the hero is very, um, has a very self-responsibility. There's quests and, you know, uh, obstacles that they must face, but it's an in, almost an internal, almost an, a very individualized set that they must go through where the, whereas the ruler, they have a vaster responsibility, a whole kingdom, you know, to look out for and that are, they are responsible for, but that in and of itself creates more problems, I guess you could say. So that intro aside, let's get to gluing things down because as you guys know, we tend to do that uh, first before I really start talking. I'm going to use my finger again because I really like to like be kiddish with this and get my finger involved. I'm using purple because for some reason purple has always been the royalty color for me. I don't think I'm going to be using any more purple necessarily. And I'm probably going to use the purple pen to type it out, to, to type it out, to draw it out. Now, how would we do ruler? Uh, I would say like their John Hancock, but I'm not because I did that. I think I did that for the sage. Well, whatever. We'll just... I think I want to make it to where it looks very, I don't know, royal, I guess you could say. Hmm. 
we go. Looks pretty good, I guess you can say. Now, um, I do like to put mottos and goals and things like that, shadows and fears and what have you. And I'm very much gonna do this, but I'm, I think I'm gonna do it in a different way. I wanna kinda map out a throne room, I guess, uh, like the throne room that's from, what other throne room, like the Game of Thrones throne room or something. It's like the floor. I think what I wanted to do here was almost make like a tarot card type of a throne. Like a, just a rough sketch here. Cover up that line since I've forgotten my drawing. Forgotten how to. <laughs> now, the... The, the trick with the ruler is that it doesn't necessarily have to be like a king. I, I know that when I started doing my research, there's always like a couple of names like ruler, king, queen, things like that. But to be honest, it's not, I don't think it has anything to do with royalty. I think it has to do with responsibility. The, res the amount of responsibility that this individual has and to themselves, but also to a large group of people. Maybe that's a family that they have. Maybe uh, it's a large family. Maybe they're the the um, matriarch or patriarch of their 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 family, their communities. Like a, someone that's got a lot of responsibility in terms of those things. And now that could be several people. In like that you know in your life that could be one person and it's like every time you hear has m major responsibilities it, you could only think about one person I mean it, it just goes on what responsibility means to you I, I believe and then largely it's about power and that is part of the motto of the ruler for the the things that I write over on this side, now we're gonna come kinda come back to this side for a second. I like to like map these out, either like post-it notes or things like that, like bullet point style, but do it in a try to do it in a creative way. And I think what I've decided to do for the goals and the um, mottos and things is to do them like flags. Because when I think of rulers and kings and queens and things I think of castles that's just where I always go with it even though that's not even, it's like hardly a thing anymore um let's do it this way you know like flags I like that red and purple together just something about it you know what do y'all think about when you hear the terms king and queen and ruler do you have does something come to mind let me know in the comments that'd be kind of fun for us to chat about Get my finger involved again. I always have to fight with it after these videos to like not be under my fingernails. I mean, if you've been watching my hands videos, like my tarot videos and things like that, or any of these other videos, you know that I, I don't have long fingernails. <laughs> but sometimes this glue gets stuck and you're just like, what is happening? I'm going to put a little one since I've got this glue and I don't want to waste it. I'm going to put this little one because I want to do something with that down here. I'm going to put some white on this so that the words really, I don't know, pop, I guess. For this middle part, I'm probably just going to use a piece of white. It's starting to look like scuba, a scuba flag, <laughs> scuba diving flag, <laughs> but I don't know. This ruler could be a scuba diver or something. Scuba diver. <laughs> I'm thinking about, uh, I think I'm thinking too much about chocolate um, and Lady Godiva, probably. Okay, so the goal, which I always 
tried to write first so that we can get kind of like a mapping of what the goal of the ruler is. Power, as I mentioned before, to the ruler is the only thing. It's not the most important thing. It's the only thing. And that's such a, that's such a profound statement because a lot of people take the word power and associate it in a negative way. There's a, it, all negative things come to mind. Shadow things come to mind when some of us hear the term power, but there is a lot of good that can come with power. I do believe that if certain societies, maybe even including our own, if we didn't have these rulers that had some sort of power over us, then there might be chaos that we would all have to deal with. And it would be on a, on a huge scale that like, say for instance, me, I could not contain an entire country's chaos. But the ruler has that type of power. And I do want to put here their fear. Oh, let's move this out of the way. I always tend to be knocking into this. Their fear is to be overthrown, naturally, because when certain rulers come into power, they, have, they typically have a vision right? They have a vision and they, they believe that they, that their vision and that their itinerary with however long that they think they're going to be in power, they think it's what's for what is best. They can see the bigger picture. They can see their kingdom or their country. They can see it as a whole. And that often leads to them believing, oh, I would do this, this, and this. And whether or not those countries are in like a demo, you know a democracy they often come to the people and the people would say oh i agree with that or no i don't right we have choices some countries don't but overall i think that they don't want to be overthrown because they have they have this need to and this goal not for dominance, not in this negative way, but in a way that says, I've got this vision and I want to execute it. And I believe that if I can control certain aspects of my vision, delegate in, in a certain kind of way, whether that turns out to be negative or not, they still have this need to fulfill uh, their destiny and to be overthrown would be one of those things that happens to the ruler that would devastate them because they wouldn't be able to cope with their vision not being executed or maybe even a, a bigger aspect of that would be the peoples of these, this large group of people that the ruler has responsibility over would not succumb to the vision or wouldn't agree with the vision. And even if he was voted into power, there might still be aspects of his, for lack of a better term, I'll say campaign, that a large part of the population wouldn't agree with. And there would be some pushback to that. So of course there would be some overthrowing paranoia happening. But I think to sum that up in one word is a word that I've already said, it would be chaos. Because they believe that their vision is a way to organize the chaos because I don't believe that we can eradicate chaos. I don't believe that chaos can be eradicated. I think that there's large aspects of the way humans live that need chaos, that they, we need certain as, you know, certain aspects of spontaneity and of, of the unknown to keep some of the, the magic alive within our bodies to keep our feet moving. And the ruler believes that they can achieve this. And when they're, they can't execute their vision, it's, it kind of leads into their own paranoia with being, uh, with chaos. And then of course being overthrown as, as a, as an offshoot of that. Now, uh, so I said the, the motto, actually, this is, um, this is actually the motto, not the goal. Huh? Well, then this is what we're going to have to do. We're going to have to put another flag here. 
so that that can be fixed. You know, no, no mistakes, just happy accidents. It was an accident. And we'll just write over it, right there. And then we'll write motto. There. No harm done. No one ever knows, except for you guys. <laughs> I may even forget if I like, when I want to come back to this, like I said, I always say this in every video, I like to come back and like, there's so many more pages in the back here that I'm going to use at, in as like a reflection journal on these archetypes specifically. Sometimes I get in these moods, it's largely why I made this series, but sometimes I get into moods where I like to do research in, in young and in psychology in general. <clears throat> And then on the archetypes, even brand archetypes, like certain brands, certain people from literature that I may read about, uh, some uh, certain characters in movies that I want to read about and want to reflect in a journal way, I can do that in this. That's largely what it's become and what it will become. So I, when I come back, I might not even forget that a little word goal is under there. So anyways, the goal, we'll write that here. Now, the goal, because I've got to type that, I've got to type, why do I keep saying type? <laughs> Write that out. Is to create a successful. Now, I like that word because it, it takes the negativity out of the word power for me. Uh, even though technically I don't have a, an adverse reaction to the word power, but I feel like we kind of need a little bit more of a positive, positive statement here. Uh, that way I don't get, I may even pos even uh, the remote chance that I may have a negative connotation with this. I don't want to. So I like the term successful here because I think that that nods back to the vision, this vision that the ruler has for their community, for their families, for their kingdom. And because I believe that all of that community, family, a uh, large group of people, I'm going to put peoples, create a successful in, uh, environment. Environment for peoples, because that could entail so much. So that's the goal. Right. And I keep talking about the vision and I hadn't decided before filming this, whether I wanted to put that into this video, whether I wanted to put something about the vision of the ruler in this, because I believe that that's something that lives inside all the ruler, the, the ruler archetype, but I don't necessarily think that all rulers have a vision. That is where the shadow comes in. So. Now, what I kind of wanted to do was make this to where this is another side. This side right here is kind of like what we would like if the if the ruler was underwater or if he was if you're tarot literate, if you. Um, it'd be like the moon card versus the sun card, like what's in light and then what's in shadow. So. However, I can draw this, even though it's hidden, that just gives it a little bit more to me. But it'll give me a chance to know that what I'm going to write down here is the shadow portions of shadow part of the ruler. And I'll probably write the word shadow just so that I'll know later on that this little statement that I'll write here is the shadow. Now for this statement, I'm going to make an analogy. I, I do that a lot. I do that a lot. I use metaphoric language a lot. And 
it just seems to be how I process things the best I can. I want to see if this bronze, oh, that's yellow. Of course it is. Because no matter how many times I tell my children not to mess with my markers, they do it anyway. <laughs> it's like you buy them all kinds of markers of their own and they still go to mommy's because mommy tends to take better care of her stuff than, than they do. <laughs> I'll use burgundy. I like I like the color burgundy instead of using black all the time. So down here, right shadow. I wanted to use an analogy, like I said, for the shadow, because that could be like, yeah, an uh, an analogy that I will understand. Katniss Everdeen from The Hunger Games. Turns into President Snow. Okay? Now what that, just that analogy means to me is Katniss is the ruler here. She... Let's just, let's just say that she's technically the hero. In the beginning, she has this type of responsibility to herself. I'm so sorry. The camera kind of cut out there at the, at the end of that. But what I was getting at was Katniss technically is a hero. She's technically a martyr. But I think by the end of the trilogy, it becomes clear that she has a vision. And I think that that's how it starts. I think that that's why at the beginning I talked about the hero versus the ruler. How they kind of are the two different sides of the same coin. Because I feel like the hero goes through certain things to at the end, in hindsight, they kind of look back and go, wait a minute, I could have done that so much better. And that's, that's kind of, it kind of, it can lead to so much chaos and anything you can do, I can do better type of a mentality when that doesn't always work. But I think, because I kind of kept talking after the camera cut out, but whatever. Um, I realized a good quote for this. And I want to share it at the end of this. So... I'm just cutting around the edge here to make it look more like a speech bubble. I tend to like to do that for my quotes because it's, I kind of like it to look like the, the archetype is doing the speaking. Let's glue this down. I'll shove the glue to all the way to the other side. Let's do it like that, like at an angle that kind of looks kind of good. Wipe the glue off. And then let's use the purple again because we tend to use a lot of reds and I don't know, the purple just seems to go on top of the purple very well. All right, he Who is to be a good ruler must have first been ruled. Aristotle. I think that just, it, it, that rounds out what I was saying about Katniss as well. I think overall, the ruler is part of a cycle. That even though they have beliefs and certain visions, that what they're doing is best for the whole. 
In terms of every other one of the archetypes, this archetype has the most to lose because they are responsible for a lot more. Instead of just themselves, they have to have a relationship with their selves and a balancing relationship with their own selves so that whatever's manifested out into whatever their kingdom is, say, I'm the ruler of just my immediate family. Let's just say that, right? In, in terms of authority, but then this particular ruler is a ruler on such a broader scale that they have to constantly look at their responsibility, their kingdom as a whole, what they have to lose because it's all on decisions and their decision making skills are going to benefit them or hinder them in their rulership. And I think that a lot of times that can lead to a certain type of madness within the ruler, a certain type of paranoia, a certain type of inner chaos that they are always preparing for to manifest out into their kingdom somewhere. So anyway, that's all I've got to say. Don't forget to check out the websites below in the resource section of this video. And I don't know what we'll be doing in 2022, but I have, ex I have really been loving, loving this. And I may come back on the December 2021 20, full moon as a way to kind of share some of the other archetypes as like maybe an end, like a closing video. So, um, which the full moon is perfect for as the new moon is for new beginnings. So if you see me on the new moon, uh, full moon later on in the month, that's great. But if not, just know that I extremely enjoyed working with the archetypes and sharing my findings with you guys. Don't be afraid to share some of yours below in the comment section. Thank you, and I hope to see everyone again on the channel. Much love.